Audi YouTubers. It is January 15th. I looked at the date today. January 15th, 2020. And these are your daily announcements. I am heading into work right now. I just stopped at my mama's house. I had to fix her computer. <laughs> Somehow. I don't know how my mom does this. Or my brother actually did it this time. My brother David is apparently. Uh, somehow, the icons on her desktop were like, like you could fit four icons on a desktop. <laughs> she made him really big. Using control scroll wheel didn't work. I tried using uh, Windows logo escape, thinking maybe she turned on magnification. I wasn't sure what the heck happened, but somehow the screen resolution got changed. I don't know if there's like an F key that that does that. Does anybody know? Is there like an accidental combination of keys that can, you know, that's like a hot key way of changing the screen resolution? If you know, please let me know in the comments below. My mom's got Windows 8 on her computer. I've been trying to get her to get a new computer and upgrade to Windows 10, which is what she has now. Um, I do have, where is my little vape? I am looking for my vape, y'all. Oh, here it is. Oh, is this it? Yeah. Okay. I only have 75 pockets, like, like a small little boy child. And they're all filled with something. Okay. Anyway, we got it fixed. So that's good mom was worried about that so I took care of it for her because I'm that kind of daughter so I hope you all are doing good I have something on my heart today that I want to talk about and I hope that this doesn't just turn into a rambling mess of words but I noticed on Facebook you know I've been trying to do more social media um I'm on a big project for work right now, so that's kind of like put a little bit of a dent in my ability to get on social media, but and that's okay because this project is awesome and I'm really excited to be a part of it, but you know, I'm very limited to how much I can actually spend on YouTube and on Facebook right now, and but, but I've noticed something. I have lots of friends who have kids and grandkids who are in that age between 16 and 20, okay? And I noticed that a lot of their posts have been have been almost like a cry for help, like a, a screaming out of frustration and venting that has me concerned. Um, because these are normally, I, I'm not going to say that all these kids are normally perfect and happy and everything's wonderful, but I'm, uh, I'm just seeing like an increase in this phenomenon of rage posts like rage just rage anger frustration confusion anxiety sadness and if these like these kids who are like in that 16 to 20 year old range are feeling like this it makes me wonder what the younger kids are feeling you know how are the younger kids handling the things that are happening in our world right now? You know, the between the Black Lives Matter protests during the summer, the pro-Trump rallies, the anti-Trump rallies, uh, the stuff that just happened at the Capitol, um, the COVID, the constant bombardment of bad news on TV about COVID and Are we paying close enough attention to our children 
to ensure that they feel safe that they feel safe and secure and loved are we spending enough time with our kids are we limiting the amount that they're being bombarded with and are we monitoring what our kids are interacting with online are we doing all these things I don't have any children so I have no idea I don't know what I would do I mean I kind of think that <laughs> I would I would have been like oh well it's a good thing I'm not a mom let's just put it that way because I probably wouldn't be allowing I'd probably do what do what I did growing up you know what my mom did with me which was Get out and play. Don't come back until the street lights come on. It sucks that we live in a world where you can't really even do that anymore because our world is so dangerous. But, you know, we didn't, my mom didn't let us plop down in front of the television and watch TV. She made us go outside. The only time we got to stay in and do anything inside was when we were sick or it was just horrible, horrible weather outside. Otherwise, she was like, get out of here, you know, or go in the basement, go build something, go do something, create something, play. And I really am so appreciative that I grew up during a time when I didn't have the peer pressure to be playing video games or watching TV because I'm sure that I would have, I would have fallen right into that because as a grown woman, I started gaming. Okay, because I'm that old. I couldn't do it when I was a kid because there was nothing. You know, there was maybe when I was in high school, there was Atari. Before that, there was Pong, and who wanted to play that? When I would go roller skating, there was things like Space Invaders and, and Ms. Pac Man and stuff, but I didn't I didn't really connect with gaming until until I was much older. Especially massive multiplayer type games, you know, but I do play massive multiplayer games now, and I, you know, I play with, I play with people who are anywhere from 14 years old up to 72 years old, the oldest person that I know that plays a game that I play is 72, which is the same age as my mother, okay, and I see all kinds of things. I mean, there there is there's a lot of toxicity in the gaming world. There's because you have that you could be anonymous thing. You know, you've got a lot of kids saying things that they shouldn't be saying, and clearly their parents are not monitoring what they're saying, what they're doing, and what they're being exposed to. Okay, you got to do that, people, because. I'm telling you right now, as a grown, sane, rational adult, I can tell you that there is an awful lot that these kids get bombarded with. And I would, I would, I think that if I was a kid right now, I would be in a constant state of terror. You know, between everything that's happening in the world and everything that I read online, I think I would be constantly afraid. And I, I wonder if that isn't happening to our kids. I wonder if our kids aren't, aren't, aren't experiencing like severe anxiety over everything that they're seeing and hearing on TV and in games and, and movies. I think maybe we need to like dial back a bit you guys with how much we're allowing our kids to like be exposed to here I mean who is teaching our children right now who is teaching our children right now is it television media video games and sometimes the teacher at school or is it through play and through your parenting or grandparenting and maybe some sort of like social moral compass like church I mean what is teaching the kids what is teaching your kids right now how much time is your kid spending on their phone or on video games how much 
I think video games are fun. Um, I play video games every day. I play a video game. I play Rust. I play Rust just about every single day for a little bit of, you know, some time or another. Sometimes I play all day. Sometimes I play for an hour or two. It depends on what I got going on in my life, right? But I tune out, I tune out of it and get away from it when I can feel inside of me that it's just time for me to stop, you know. As a grown woman, I've got that figured out, <laughs> you know. But kids, kids don't know. And I really feel like we should be monitoring that a lot more closely than what we are. And I also think, okay, your children are going to be a parent, right? They're going to say the things that you say. They're going to do the things that you do because you guide them in life. I think that maybe, especially for kids under the age of 10, I don't know that politics are something that they need to be exposed to. I don't think that your angry views about whether or not somebody won or didn't win, I don't think that needs to be a part of their life. That's just me, okay? They need to be outside playing. They need to be experiencing friendships. They need to be learning how to mingle and have these interactions with people that's the stuff that's important right now whether or not they are for or against a particular candidate at their age is not important so if you're around the dinner table and you're yelling and screaming about a particular candidate and whether or not they wit are winning or not winning and you're calling all the people who this particular candidate uh, attracts evil, bad, horrible, saying, they th saying things like they should die, I wish they would all go away. When you're saying things like that, you are sowing the seeds of, of fear in your kids. Because a lot of these kids have friends who have good friends that they love to play with and talk to and giggle with and do fun things with whose parents probably are on the other side of the of the coin from you and if you're sitting there and you're yelling and screaming you're not only destroying you're not only scaring your kids but you might be destroying a friendship and kids at that age do not understand politics you can sit down and you can explain what you think or what you feel to the best of your ability to your kids. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But don't plant. Just remember, if you're like yelling and screaming about this stuff, that your kids are hearing this too. And they don't know what is going on. They don't understand the whole process. And you might be like, oh, my kid is really smart and they totally understand and blah, blah, blah. Well, that might be true. Your, your child might be really, really smart. But if you're scaring them and causing them anxiety and screwing up friendships over your political opinions about things, you're doing a disservice to your child, I, f I fully believe. Because I believe that there are good and bad people on both sides of the aisle, and I think that your children need to understand that. And they need to learn on their own how to determine whether or not somebody is a good person or a bad person, and that their politics aren't, aren't as, it, it, politics are a matter of perception. They're not black and white, good and evil. And your kids are scared. So please, please, if you're gonna have a discussion with your child, explain to them, here is what's going on, but try to keep it neutral. Don't throw your own anger or rage about the situation into it because you're just gonna freak them out. 
do you want your kid going to school and punching out a Trump supporter or punching out a Biden supporter? Or do you want your kid to go to school and, and be talking about this stuff and, and get beat up themselves? Let's just let our kids be kids. Let them go to school. Let them learn. Learn about the Constitution. Learn about history. Learn how to be good citizens and learn how to read and write and do arithmetic and not be worrying about this crap. So that's what was on my heart today. You guys can think what you want. And if you disagree with me, that's fine. You can, as long as you're uh, civil, you can put your comments below it and talk to me about it. And I'd be happy to listen to your opinions on it. If you personally attack me though, I'm going to just delete your comment because I don't got time for that. I don't. Okay, have a great day. Love you guys. Mwah. Take care, everybody. Waves like crazy. Bye-bye.